wingspan of 84 feet, and they were 49 feet long from the nose to the tail. And they would haul 15 fighter infantry with all of their equipment. See that uh, we did, when we hauled people in the glider, we never could wear a parachute because the glider troops didn't have that parachute. So you did the land to get them out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, they didn't. Uh, they didn't have parachutes. Yes, uh, at a, at a base where we took training in the heavy, or the big gliders, Lubbock, Texas. What do, I, what do I have all these pictures for? Here they, they had me make that, uh, that fence, and uh, it was in an obstacle course, and the uh, troops, I had to jump up and grab a hold of the top of this and then go down the other side. It's an obstacle, of course. Here is a, we are, and then that's a fellow from Tennessee. Here's a dog. There's always a dog around the base because he could get, get a lot to eat, there'd be food for him. <coughs> This one was uh, beside the barracks at Big Spring, Texas, September 27th. This is beside, these are the tents we lived in. Was this before uh, Pearl Harbor? Yeah, yeah. Now here's another thing. Uh, Some place out there in New Mexico, uh -huh. I stopped at a uh, uh, some kind of a, I think it was a gas oh, station, wow. and they had this oh, wildcat no. there. So I used tame, and uh, I picked him up. So that's a wildcat, and uh, he didn't bother me at all. And here, at the same place, they had these mules. And uh, I patted them. And uh, here again, is that the, that's the same wildcat in the, yeah? And here no, no. is the eagle. I had this eagle in the cage there, and you could, you could take him out, and he sat on your shoulders. Now this is, uh, in, in the Belgium, after I flew into uh, Holland, Netherlands, in a mission, I came through this town. Uh, I was walking out away from the, the base where we, we landed, and uh, just down the road a little ways, there's a plane waiting for me. And, and then I just got in there and they took me back over to England. So you'd abandon your gliders every time? Yeah. Wow. I had, I, this, this is the same picture I saw before. Why did you take uh, gliders instead of planes? Instead of what? Planes. Uh, <laughs> what, what they planned on was uh, now, I'll give you an example. Uh, Hitler, the Germans, first used gliders in combat before the, the United States even heard of gliders to carry uh, troops and, and equipment. And there was a lot, they, uh, the Belgians had built a fort uh, okay. that the Germans would have to go, to, right. to get into a breakup and have just built so big <coughs> that nobody would attempt with, with troops with uh, 
infantry and uh, yeah oh no and uh, like army stuff. In, infantry and, and uh, tanks and that they wouldn't even tr even try to get into that tank but the Germans figured out now if we is a huge roof if we come in with so many troops in the gliders land on that roof and the, the vents, the air vents and so on uh, came up through the roof and what they did was just dump explosives down that those vents into the, the uh, troops, the, the Belgian troops. Couldn't they use um, artillery? Yeah. Didn't, no, well, they, they couldn't use artillery for, uh, because it, it was built up around there so they couldn't get to it. But uh, they, uh, within uh, just a day, a day or so or a week, they had completely captured that, uh, that uh, <coughs> Fort that was called impregnable. It, it, it just be impossible for anybody to to attack and get in. Yeah, but the Maginot Line. The, well, the Maginot Line was uh, the the French had built that. Yeah, and it failed. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, built it between Germany and and France. Could be a side step up. Uh -huh. And and uh Hey, how you doing? Okay. What's your name? Hi David. David? Hi David, I'm Aunt D. Hi Aunt. I'm gonna set in and listen to the stories. Remember, Mr. Uh, oh boy, I can't think of his name. Teacher over there. He broke in the, the kids, the seniors, when I had a birthday, and <coughs> and uh, the uh, tardy bell rang, and the, and the door opened up, and there came a card in with a cake and, and punch bowl and the uh, whole works. But the the uh, board said the teachers would not have parties during class time. And uh, I looked at that class. I said, uh, if you think it's not for me that, to, to arrange this, the ones that did it, we don't have a party. And if I get fired tomorrow, uh, you can, we'll take up a collection to get me out of town. <laughs> and why? Was, was and, it Mr. And, Posh? Huh? Mr. Posh? No, this is uh, Martitius. Oh. Do you remember him? He, he I looked, don't think he was there when I got uh, there. Oh, one day? He looked in the door and saw it going on, and he came right on in. And here's, here's a picture of him. He just... Just laughing like a chest cat. <laughs> another picture, I'm cutting the cake. And here's the holding the cake up. And uh, I didn't get fired. Well, it's a good thing they didn't use all those pictures as evidence to get you fired. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. Uh, I, these pictures are all mixed up. There's, this is a cousin of mine that in the snowstorm. There's nothing on that. Again, I, I have a lot of pictures that there's no title on it. Nothing. 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 Yes. That's nothing. You see all your war pictures? Yeah. 
Here's a, here's a picture of the Civic Center, Cardiff, Wales. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big bam. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see the um, Tower of London? Yeah. Now this, what's this parliament? That parliament? You know, can you tell them? That's the parliament building from there. Nothing. Nothing. This is State Teacher College of Harrisburg. Know where that slipped in. Did you go over there with your mom, David? Did, did your mom go over there to England? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But you, you weren't with her when? Oh, yeah, I was there. Oh, okay. Did okay. you go to London? In Edinburgh, in Scotland. I was there when I was about nine. Do you remember much about it? Mm -hmm. Went to um, a museum there and they had like the Rosetta Stone. They had um, a bunch of uh, statues and stuff from Egypt. In Edinburgh or in? In, um, in London. Uh, and I also had a friend that was there who came out at the exact same time wow. in London. Did you meet up with him when you were there? Mm -hmm. Oh, traffic's horrible there. Yeah, it is. Did you go on the, the double-decker bus and take the big tour? Oh, once we did, in Edinburgh, but not in London. We usually took the Instagram because it just deadlocks everywhere, the traffic constantly. Did, uh, now, me and, and Grandma Barnes went there mm -hmm. several years ago, and we saw it. Did you see the crown jewels? Um, yeah, I think so. The, or the Wax Museum? Mm -mm. Did you go to Westminster Abbey? That um, big, big church that have. looks like a wedding cake? Might have, I don't remember. It is, it's quite a town. It is, it's this. really, has, it, it's very populated. Natural History Museum. Mm -hmm. Did you go to the Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh Castle? Um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't remember. That's not so long. Oh, boy. Went to some castle. Let's go to the Edinburgh one. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of castles over there. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Well, Shave was impressed with the bag. All right. He, he wished he would have brought his mountain bike to yeah. take the big hill. Yeah. Shave right now. Thank you. Yeah. The bathroom, maybe. Yeah. 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 some pictures someplace that are all mounted and it shows the uh, gliders, tow planes, just uh, everything. I don't know where I don't know where they are. These I sorted out and uh, not much in there to yes, uh, Yeah. 
Where, where were the girls go? To pick up some stuff from the doctor in the stock of the store. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cutting Lake Sturgeon. Yeah. Yeah, that's a... Uh, That my brother was a radio operator. There's ten, ten, ten crew, and, and the plane is right behind there. Is that your brother? Yeah, that's him. You shall. He's in now. This is a picture of a of a Dutch windmill. That's when we were in uh, Holland. I know it wasn't uh, a good time to be in Europe, but how did you like Holland? I didn't pay much attention. Uh -huh. It was, uh, they, you read how the, the Dutch worked and worked, and we took water from the sea, they'd build dikes and, and pump the water out. When the Germans took it over, they just flooded the whole thing. Now here is a 
German ambulance shot up by American P-51. I hear this one. This is part of my... Wow. Mustang demonstration. Mm. Yeah. Mustang demonstration. This is the way we lived during it. It got very cold. They didn't heat no. it, did they? Hmm? They couldn't heat it, could they? Oh, oh yeah, we, we, we had a stove in there. Four, four men in the tent. Here is a baby who asked about what they told the gliders with. And uh, these are all C-47s, and then that's about all. They did use some other planes, but this is, this is the main. And that's what's this down here. Wounded brought from combat zone? Yeah, let me see it. Oh, yeah. Evacuated wounded. Wounded brought from the combat zone. They hauled them in the, the uh, ambulance, and they put them in the plane. Called them to the where the hospital was. Did you? Is it glider? Yeah. 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 Ah. Uh, this. This is a glider, and the bulldozer they hauled in it at that time. The, the front of it opens up. I think they got one of them a jeep. These are some of my friends there. This that's the German plane that was captured in the hangar after they uh, took over the from the Germans. Did you have any German prisoners around there? Well, no, no, just, just wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. <coughs> this is some... Uh, the tow gliders there, and this is a flag that uh, somebody brought in. This is some of my friends at uh, the Eiffel Tower, is it? Or they... Yeah. Looks like it. And this is, you see what that is? That's a wounded. Yeah, some more wounded all the way. And this is a. Uh, they, they brought in a big a bunch of German prisoners while we were up there in Holland. And there they are. A lot of them are just young kids. They're getting down to... Christian, do you have a curling iron? Okay, maybe we better use that today. Where, where did they put them? Well, the, the last I saw them, they rounded them up and uh, just... Uh, uh, put them in a, a little area and then guarded them. And the guards had gone. They didn't try to get away. That's the. Uh, They're probably, you know, not not that unhappy about being there instead of being in the war. Oh, there's some that were tickled to death. But a lot of them are just young kids. And that's what's this. That's all the comforts of, of the home. <laughs> Is that the same, same winter quarters? Same winter quarters that I had the snow. And was that, that in Holland also? No, that was 50 miles west of, of, of Paris. Oh. We had, had a base there, runway, and tents. Mm -hmm. This is a, I guess, self-explanatory of caskets on the wagons. Do you see what it says there, Dave? Hmm? Yeah, caskets containing bodies of the old Hollanders. Was that from the war? Yeah, that is in, in uh, autumn. They, uh, Germans, before they went last, they, they killed a lot of the local people. This is a B-24 dropping supplies for the soldiers there in Holland. 
to attempt the uh, at the air shoots over there. This is the same thing dropping supplies for the. Could they find them? Oh yeah, they uh, they dropped uh, some, and uh, the troops were there to pick it up. And this is what happened to some of the gliders. Some people thought that that's the way they're supposed to land them, but uh, I never could under I never could believe it. Because they say you're supposed to crack it up when you land it. Well, <laughs> you might you might get killed. You're supposed to crack it up. Well, that's that's what people told me that didn't know anything about gliders. But they they uh, the way they understood that. When a glider came in for a landing, it was supposed to be a rough landing or something like this. And all the people in there were dead. And what's the use of that? Well, I, I couldn't make <laughs> oh. But uh, uh, actually, the gliders, a lot of the pilots were not not the best pilots. They were poor material, but they took whatever they could get. And, uh, what they would do when they cut off the tow plane to land, they'd push the uh, stick down so that the glider dove, and the more you pull, push the stick, so it goes faster and faster. The only one you get down there to land, they want land uh, over 70 miles. If you're going over 70, they want land to hit and bounce. And, uh, to make a good landing, it get down to about 60 miles an hour. But they, uh, they, uh, the pilots, they were... Uh, that got killed in the glider? Brother-in-law, Glenn. I had no I They have some science I had to you this morning. What happened with him now? Uh, when we left here, we went to Columbus. Then we went to uh, to Rafa in New Mexico. And from there, they would send the glider pilots out, but uh, alphabetical. So you see, uh, B and E are quite a ways apart. So he ended up in uh, California, and I ended up at uh, uh, Arizona, some place in, in uh, Texas, and and uh, then he kept getting farther behind. And when I heard that he was killed, I, I was in England, and and uh, he was in. Texas, yeah. So, did your brother get, was he with you when you were, went over to Europe? No. Which one? Um, the one that you showed me a picture of that was with you in a, one of these <laughs> pictures. Well, that brother went to the Persian Gulf the one down below my face there, he was, he was the picture we had here in the crew. But he didn't go to Europe with you? Oh, he was in, in Italy. They, I don't know how many missions they flew, but he went all through the war, May 24. And you went over on the Queen Mary? Yeah. To the cruise liner? <coughs> the British cruise liner? Yeah. That's not a battleship you were back. Yeah, we, we landed in uh, Firth and Clyde. That's what I'm saying. Uh, ever come, come into the North Sea. <coughs> And uh, then they took us off in, in smaller boats there at us to the shore. And it, I didn't realize how big that thing was until, until we got away from it. You could see back, it was, oh boy, it's huge. 
tremendous 1200 and some feet long. About the same length as these uh, television towers. They didn't, uh, the Queen never traveled in convoy. All the rest of the ships did because I think they didn't have no speed that the Queen could, could outrun them. Uh, outrun them. The, the submarines. Was it a um, converted into a transport? Yeah. Will yeah. it change back at the end of the war? Yeah. Now, I don't know whether they ever did the convert or the, the, Now, when we went across, they uh, they had twelve twelve thousand crew. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand and fifteen thousand troops. That means that you could uh, you could get about all of the people in Oregon and the, on the Queen Mary. Were they packed in there? Or? Well, that, it was uh, just mm-hmm. normal. That's fine. Yeah. Fifteen <coughs> thousand yeah. people. Just you, you can't even you can't imagine them. And imagine feeding all those people it's and like a, feeding them and well, they had the crew. The largest carrier that was six thousand people. Yeah. They fit in that many people. Yeah, it's hard to picture it. Did they put like bunks and everything? Or? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was in the in an officer's. They put us in, in an officer's uh, stateroom, and they had, uh, normally there'd be two men would occupy that, but uh, they had put in a, in a bunk six high. Wow. So you had... Uh, had you don't want to be on the top. Well, I... I <laughs> <laughs> Now she's going to fall out of bed. Well, did you draw lots, or how did you decide who slept where? I don't even remember. I don't even remember what the guys looked like in there. That was quite a climb up the bunk. Do you have a something blocking it so it wouldn't fall off? What? Did you have a rail or something to keep you in there? I don't uh, Uh, don't know. uh, I don't remember. I mean, I remember the, the general details, but uh, yeah. But when we were going towards shore right, and the river, and look, I looked back and seen it, oh, it just a shot. Because you know, when I got out of in, in New York City, we came down the river on boats. And the boats pulled right up beside the Queen, and the, the steps are just right where they could get on. How big was the ship? Uh, How big was it? Boat? Uh, no, the Queen Mary. Uh, it was, uh, again, if you want to see, look across the field and, and look at one of those television towers, mm-hmm. and it was. Uh, 12 feet over a thousand feet long. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, Was that the first time you ever did any of that kind of traveling? I mean, that you ever went that far? <laughs> oh, I've never been any place. Um, Anybody familiar with the old muskets, uh, muskets? Listen to this explanation. Uh, he was looking over his musket. It was a good one. It had been in a present on his 16th birthday made by Dave DeVinney, one of the finest musket rifle makers in the state. Uh, this is on the East Coast. He moved the hammer back on half cock and looked down at the prison, noting the smoothness of the action. Picking up a flint, he inserted it into the mechanism, pulled the hammer back to full cock, then pulled the trigger. The machinery clicked sharply. The flint struck the prison and sparks flew. If there had been black powder inside, it would have exploded instantly, setting off the charge in the interior of the musket. 
It was a good piece, and he examined the flints of which he had over a hundred. Imagine having to carry those flints around for your gun. They wore out with use, and a piece shaped in a standardized form by a skilled flint worker was good on the average of some 20 or 30 shots, and then was thrown away. Isn't that something? I never knew it. Had. I never knew you had to throw it away. I just thought you had a flint, and you used it, you know, however many times. Yeah, it would wear it eventually, but, you know, like a couple hundred shots per flint. Under normal conditions, a good musket would misfire once, perhaps in 20 or more shots, sometimes because of a poor, worn-out flint, often because in the rain it was practically useless. At other times, the touch hole through the barrel became plugged with powder, following the priming flash, which in turn would fail to ignite the charge. Quinn has one. Did you know that? A musket? Uh -huh. Does he shoot it? Once in a while. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. Placing the musket down carefully, he picked up the powder horn and the bullet pouch, weighing them carefully in his hand. He had spent the last two nights molding the bullets out in the work shed. They, they'd uh, melt lead, you know, and... Make their own bullets? Yeah. Who does that, too? Really? First shaving the lead into an iron pot, he then set the pot in coals. When the lead had melted, he would ladle it out into the bullet molds watching as the hot lead flowed in a slithering, shining stream, I love to see that, into the molds. The liquid metal fascinated him. He had always felt a strong urge to touch it, for it didn't look hot at all. It looked silvery and cool. Once he had tried it, to his dismay, he raised a blister the size of a shilling on his bow. When the bullets had finally cooled, he had taken them out and trimmed the roughness off with his knife. Now he removed the bullets one at a time from the pouch, rubbing them with an old piece of deer skin that was warm and slick. When he finished the last slug, he put it back in the deerskin bag and pulled the drawstring tight. You better find a world with that. I have to reload for like 10 minutes. We saw this thing on Civil War and they'd reload, they'd all fire, then they'd sit down, start reloading while they have someone else going out and firing, back and forth. So you're kind of a sitting target yeah, while you're reloading. They're like standing 20 feet away. The two lines of enemy. You know, like, you know, like everyone in the road would fall down dead, and then the next row would come up, fire, and try to get down as fast as they could. Very point. And there's just whole armies of people. Why don't they just throw dice and? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we want to see the queen there. It's still probably is still out in Long Beach, California. Have a open for visitation. Yeah, we'll have to go there, David. Yeah. Now you can stand there like a hotel now. Yeah. Yeah. It took four days to cross the ocean from New York to. Uh, Is that all? Four days. Not the pilgrims take a month or something. Oh, yeah. Well, that's their sailing. This yeah. thing's going at least 20 knots. Um, they're yeah. probably going at like five knots. Pilgrims. Yeah, they just keep going back and forth and ferrying people. Yeah. A lot of ships just did that ferrying things back and forth and back and forth. Then when that theater had been captured, then you'd have to ferry them again. Like all the, like a bunch of aircraft that were ferried in North Africa from England and, and all over by, by a carrier wasp. But then when they conquered North Africa, they had to take it to Italy and England for um, Operation Overlord. Do it all over again. And eventually the wasp got so because it was on active duty. When we, we came home, we came on the C-46. See, the C-47 was Douglas. That was a main tow ship, tow plane for gliders. And this is C-46, just a, looks a lot like the C-47 and about the same size. But they never got used them very much in, in uh, glider hauling or, or paratroop. We took off from England 
flew to Iceland, and uh, that's above the Arctic Circle. And we, uh, for some reason, we stayed there two or three days. And uh, if you went to bed at 12 o'clock and, uh, and woke up at 12.30, there wouldn't be any difference in the no amount of light because uh, there's no night at that time. So it's just light all the time? Yeah. Was it pretty there? Or well, it, uh, it, uh, Iceland, you, you know, it wasn't the ice and uh, it was kind of a farming and uh, a fishing, big fishing. Then we flew over to Greenland, and uh, Greenland has been built up by the ice over many years until the ice cap on Greenland is 10,000 feet thick. Wow. All of the snow and, and the ice that comes down during the cold season, now it does not melt. It is stays there and he builds up so 10,000 feet and as you approach Greenland you can see the big iceberg is breaking off wow. and uh, falling in the ocean and then they drift. See that's the way the Titanic got hooked by. Right? One of those icebergs? Yeah, an iceberg that drifted off from some. It had to be a, a land that surface because it wouldn't build up any place else. And just the ice circles it and then gets water and water and pieces of it, the edge break off and float out in the ocean. And you just see a little tiny bit of it at the top. It, it, mm -hmm. The iceberg looks like it's 20 or 30 feet away, but the bottom of it's touching it's the ship. Um, yeah. It smashes. Did you see that movie, The Titanic? Did you see the movie of The Titanic? No. Well, the recent version, there have been like four versions. Was it worthwhile? Yeah, I think it was pretty good. I mean, they tried to make it as realistic as they could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The recent version. Yeah. yeah, this glider was one of the first ones that I saw after I landed. <laughs> and it oh. actually, it had hit and turned tail and till it was almost a, a ball, height of the frames. And uh, you could look in there, the bodies hadn't been removed. So that's the first thing you saw before you started? flying out there, well, that crash. Well, that's, that's what I saw after I landed. But then there was another one that, that landed at the same place. Only he, he didn't make a good landing. It would be really scary. Yeah. But these, these, uh, the glider troops, see they had paratroopers, and they were the toughest fighting men in the military, and, and they were dropped with a parachute. And then they had the glider troopers, airborne infantry, they rode the glider to land. But actually, they didn't haul too many air, or glider troops because it was better to drop them out of a, a plane with a parachute. But the, these uh, glider troopers, I tell you an experience I had, I, I, I re don't remember the details, but I was told or instructed to to go to a certain place 
and, I, and the glider would be there, and there'd be 15 glider troops there. And uh, the plane would, would land and, and pick us up and uh, fly us so far and this and that. And uh, then you'd land. But when, when I first got there and the, the troopers, 15 of them, were well, uh, just as tough as they could be, tougher than, than paratroopers and cursing and yelling and this and that. And uh, then it was time to take off and uh, it's flying along and I, I, I listened. There wasn't a sound back, back behind me. And I took a peek back there and then all taken off their helmet liner. Mm. All of them, all of them, not a, not a peep. They were all sick. Mm. And, and then, then we landed and then they started to celebrate. Boy, oh, what a wonderful time I was. <laughs> yeah, boy, just wonderful how you planned that thing. <laughs> I had yeah, that's <laughs> a shame about how sick right, they got. Right when they were. <laughs> well, maybe they'd seen the same crumpled up gliders before that you had. Well, I hope they that that was true. They didn't take part in one of them. The gliders more or less were used to transport equipment. Were they very large, what? the gliders? Ah, yeah, didn't I tell you? Uh, like 68 feet long. Uh, the mm -hmm. wingspan, uh, uh, 84 feet. Mm, the length is like large. 40. And four forty by forty nine or something like that. And the nose to the tail are forty nine feet long. But it must have been pretty wide if you could carry fifteen troops in there. Yeah, well it was. But then once it landed it just stayed there, right? Well what they what they uh, would do after an operation if they uh, Landed a bunch of gliders. Then they would bring in a bulldozer like this one I had, and would smooth out a temporary runway long enough for a C-47 to land and hook up the rope and take off, tow them out. So they just like take them one one after another. Yeah. It's the C-47s must have been pretty good. What? The C-47s must have been pretty good to be able they to. Were very good. They were the first hmm. best airline plane for several years before they they uh, were taken into the military. Now, what they were similar to DC-3s? What? Were they were similar to DC-3s? DC-3, mm -hmm. yeah, see, there's the, the, uh, the designation for the civilian was DC-3, while the military was C-47. It was the exact same aircraft? Uh, it was the same aircraft then? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah they didn't, they made them the same as for the airline. But when the war was over, they, they had developed much bigger planes for the airline. And so my dad flew on a DC-3. He married to someone, so a couple on a DC-3. How, during wartime, you know, in Britain, how do the people seem, like, pretty sturdy and, I mean, was there kind of panic or? I don't know. Well, some, uh, uh, they had to, to uh, the general population had to, to be under stress 
because uh, the Germans had a lot more bombers than uh, Britain did, and, and they had a lot more bombers than Britain had fighters. See, this is the only defense the British had was the fighter planes. Yeah, and, and they had like, at the beginning of the battle, were in like 600, and the Germans had somewhere in 2,400. And they, and Germans had <coughs> like factories, and so they couldn't build more. The only thing they really had other than fighters was radar, so they could see them coming. And how were the Lancaster bombers? Mm -hmm. How were the Lancaster bombers? Very good. I compared to like a B-17 that they yeah, good or yeah. bad. Very good. The, uh, that was their best bomber. Yeah. How, how did you feel about Monty at that time? Montgomery. Montgomery. Not too good. <laughs> no, no one in the U.S. liked him. Not too good. But all the British people loved him. It's nearly as good as most people, most generals. I happened to be in London when the, the, the V-1 bomber that the Germans sent was a, a uh, Missile. plane that uh, carried a certain amount of explosives and, and they could still direct it from the air and they would, would put in enough fuel so it would land approximately where they wanted to with the, the explosive. Yeah, wasn't it? But that could be shot down by the British. Yeah, wasn't it a, a missile? Uh, wasn't the V-1 and the V-2 missiles? Yeah, and the V-2. They were even able to sink an Italian battleship. Yeah. The V-2 was a... Pretty accurate. They had a guidance system. That's a, a guidance. That, uh, they, uh, they like couldn't direct that. They had a little compass. They yeah. directed it from the... the Unfortunately, had good technology. Yeah. Very good technology. And so we took all the V1s and V2s and made our own missiles using them. That's it. The Terrier missiles is derivative of the V2. We just mounted on a battleship. I, I happened to be in London when the V-1 was coming over and, and you could, uh, you knew where that was and where it hit and the uh, fighter planes could shoot it down. The V-2 was a, a uh, guided missile and you did not know that that was coming until it hit. It was going so fast that uh, it outran the sound. And I was there at that time. And uh, when they uh, they hit and exploded, you could feel safe because you knew it wasn't going to hit you. But until it did, you just didn't know. Yeah. Well, I heard there are still places in London that they haven't built back. I'm sure that uh, that London was hard hit. Hard. There were a lot of undetonated bombs in London, France, Still. and Germany. Yeah, they just, just a lot of them are dead. There's also shells from the First World War. So they're digging, and all these farmers are plowing through there to hit bombs. And, and they go up? Yeah, they go up. Yeah. So they, they recently had that in California, bombs there.